What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you the CWL Premier Week 4 league-wide recap. We're going to be covering everything that happened here in Week 4, everything under the sun. And like I said, back in uh, the previous video, back in the Week 3 league recap, when we were talking about this video right here, uh, all these wars that went down uh, last weekend were all interdivision matchups. There was a lot of flip-flopping going on uh, with some of the victories and some incredible wars. Uh, like always, I will have a bunch of highlighted wars uh, where a lot of incredible attacks uh, were recorded. Uh, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that following the standings, which uh, I know a lot of you guys really enjoyed uh, having that visual, seeing the standings. So we're bringing it back here uh, for this week four recap. So uh, like I always say, these are not in any particular order. There are not uh, conferences here uh, in Premier here in Season 3. It's just eight divisions, none of them in any particular order. But we will start off with the Dragon Division, looking at Gumma Samurai and Grumpy Old Men. Both of these clans walking away with victories here in Week 4. And I do have highlighted, uh, I, I have some attacks highlighted from each of their wars. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for that. They're both seeing it 3-1, looking very solid. We have Reddit Viper, uh, who did take a loss uh, here in week four. They have dropped now to one and three. And Vlar Mugul is still searching for their first victory. They are 0 and 4 in fourth place in the Dragon Division. Moving on over to the P.E.K.K.A. Division, we have Varhai Seleke and North Awakens, who both uh, walked away with victories. Uh, here in week four, they're also sitting at three and one. Uh, Dragon Rejects, uh, they have now fallen to two and two after taking a loss here uh, in week four. And Kornfeld in fourth place sitting at one in three. In the Baby Dragon Division, I'm telling you guys, Swarm Synergy. Wait till you guys see uh, some attacks that were recorded from the Swarm Synergy War. They put on an absolute show. And they are in first place, comfortably in first place, as you guys see it. Uh, they are three and one. Uh, the two closest clans to them in this division are Assassin's Corps and Gortoborg's Krieger, who are at one and three. Assassin's Corps picking up uh, a victory here in week four, their first victory of the season. Congratulations to them. And BDM Beatables are now at 0 and four after taking a loss here uh, in week four. Uh, their own four in fourth place in the Baby Dragon Division. Covering the minor division, we have Forbidden, the only undefeated clan here, guys, in the entire league. They are at a solid 4-0. Uh, we have Dark Avengers and One Hive Genesis, who are both at 3-1, the tightest division in the league right now, guys. And even Nottingham, who's sitting at 2-2, two and two, is down in fourth place. Uh, so like we've been saying uh, since last week in the week three uh, league recap, the minor division is so competitive. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other four divisions before we check out some incredible attacks. All right, guys, starting off at the top in the wall breaker division, we have War Addict sitting at three and one after getting a huge victory uh, this weekend. Uh, we have FYSB who also bounced back, picking up five 10v10 triples this war. They are now at two and two, uh, who they ward uh, Unius Exercitus, who are also at two and two. And Emphatic Fury at 2-2, two two, another division where a, a couple wins and a couple losses could completely uh, flip this division around. Uh, so Wallbreaker Division, also very competitive as we've seen it pan out so far through uh, Week 4 here. Uh, in the Balloon Division, we have Dark Looter X and Bad Intentions, both tied for first place, sitting, uh, both those clans sitting at 3-1 and one right now. CLC Hogwarts, uh, who took a loss here in week 4, uh, they are now one, <clears throat> they are now at 1-3. and three. And we have Axe You Something, another clan still searching for their first victory on the season. They are in force, uh, fourth place, sitting at 0-4. In the Wizard Division, we have TWSS, all alone, in first place, sitting at 3-1. and one. We have Above and Beyond, 
who are at two and one right now on the season. Uh, they did have a war scheduled against Meet the Kings. Meet the Kings, unfortunately, have dropped out from Premier. Uh, not sure if Meet the Kings, if, if a clan's going to be replacing them or if it's just going to be a wash. Uh, you guys will just have to stay tuned once I find that find out that information, I will definitely get it out to you guys. Uh, CWC Brawlers, who are in third place, uh, who are sitting at one and two right now. Uh, we have Art of War, who are at two and two, along with From Molten Lava and Gahazi Bomber 2, all three of these clans. Uh, I mean, again, one win and one loss will completely flip around uh, the healer division. Uh, so we have Art of War from Molava, Gahazi Bomber 2, all tied for first place. And we have King Jeffrey sitting at one and two, still behind one war as they do have one war to make up uh, against CWC Brawlers uh, later on in the season. Now, as promised, let's go ahead and check out some amazing attacks recorded from the highlighted wars here in week four, CWL Premiere. All right, guys, very first war that we are going to be highlighting as we do have quite a few to get through, as always, is DLX who took on Ask You Something here in week four. We have DLX in first place, uh, sitting at three and one after their 82 to 77 victory over Ask You Something. That's a five star victory dropping Ask You Something uh, to 0 and four now, still looking for their first victory of the season covering the stats dlx out the gate guys out the gate had two 10 v 10 triples within the first hour of the war really really crazy stuff one of them was fresh the other one was scouted uh this was one of the attacks right here uh court actually 10 v 10 six pack this war and got that six pack in a hurry putting all kinds of pressure on ask you something which is exactly what happened. Uh, 10v11, however, DLX, again, 10v10s, completely rocked it. 10v11, only going two for six. However, uh, DLX did have an 11v11 triple uh, from this war. Uh, so because their 10v11 game was struggling, uh, it did open up the opportunity since the 10s showed up on the 10v10 triples. Uh, they were able to be in that position for an 11v11 attempt, ending up getting a three star. Uh, so very, very solid. So three 10v10s and 11v11 triple, pretty hard to compete against that despite the other stats. Uh, 11v10 dips for DLX going four for six. So they did have two dip fills, but again, that 11v11 just added that much more pressure onto actually something. Uh, covering their stats, not sure what happened, guys. Uh, they did not have a 10v10 triple. Not every clan does every war. Uh, but more importantly, they went two for 16, uh, 10v11. And this was the big stat right here uh, before this replay ends when we move on. They went two for seven on their 11v10 dips, having five dip fails. Not sure if they just gave up. Not exactly sure what happened, uh, but those are the stats bringing it to you guys. Uh, but they definitely have to get, uh, they got to figure out what's going on if they're going to be winning any wars in this season. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have War Addicts who took on Emphatic Fury. And what, I mean, what a close war this was, guys. Uh, we have War Addicts, they put up 84 stars uh, against Emphatic Fury. So the final was 84 to 82, getting a two-star victory over Emphatic Fury. Uh, War Axe did have one 10v10 triple, and they did go three for nine on their 10v11 game. Uh, so they they were not able to get one of Emphatic Fury's uh, 11s doubled with their Town Hall 10s. However, I'm telling you guys, putting the pressure on 11v10 going 8 for 8, that is absolutely huge. Even if you don't get a 10v10 triple, if you're spinning the 4, 10, 16 breakdown in Premier, you go 8 for 8, you double all the 11s, that alone, guys, is going to give you 84 stars, even without a 10v10. So they put up 84 stars with the 10v10 triple, going perfect on their dips, leaving one of the 11s uh, only one star. And we had Emphatic Fury, uh, who did not get a 10v10 triple this war. Uh, they did, however, it took a, a few more hits, but they did clear all of War Addict's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. So again, something to build off of for them. 
and they went six for seven on their dip game. Uh, they did send, they tried for an 11 v 11 attempt, ultimately ended in a fail. However, one thing I did want to touch on uh, that I haven't been bringing up a lot in the other recaps, guys, my apologies, is the nines. Emphatic Fury's Town Hall nines, guys, completely rocked it this war, going 16 for 20. Think about that. Uh, they again they spun the 410 16 traditional breakdown uh, only ha only had four fails from their town hall nines going 16 for 20 uh, despite that what what really killed uh, the war for emphatic fear as they did have chances to win is all of the hits uh, that they had to send at war addicts town hall 11s again they cleared but it took them 16 tries in order to do so. Uh, but big shout out to War Addicts. Uh, they're three and one on the season now, Emphatic Fury now two and two. Okay, next up we have Varhai Seleke, who took on Dragon Rejects and what actually ended up in a tie, 111 to 111. That right there, that's, that's invite right there. This was the only uh 40 v 40 uh spin of the entire uh of the entire week here in week four 111 to 111 varhai seleke winning uh in total destruction but still both these guys managing to put up 111 stars that is absolutely huge so shout out to both clans uh and especially varhai seleke coming out uh with a victory uh moving to three and one now and we have dragon rejects who have now dropped two two and two okay so for high uh they did have two 10 v 10 triples this war they did go four for 14 uh on the 10 v 11 game and as far as their dips there were five uh, town hall 11s on each side of the war map they did go eight for 10 so they had two dip fills uh but still not bad considering 10 you know 10 i mean that's they're still hitting 80 percent at the end of the day only two dip fills eight successful attacks uh on their dips dragon rejects also picking up very very close guys also uh picking up two 10v10 triples this war and really almost damn near a mirror image going four for 16 on their 10v11 game uh varhai seleke going uh 10 for 11 uh dragon rejects actually did a little bit better on their dips they went seven for nine only having one dip fail that other town hall 11 attack went for an 11v11 triple seeing as dr's Town Hall 10s left one of for High Seleke's Town Hall 11s only one star, so they tried for that 11 v 11 attempt. Ultimately ended up in a fail, but regardless, shout out uh, to both of these clans. Uh, and for High Seleke, this is the second time really flexing, uh, showing how deep their roster is. They did back in week one uh, when they wore uh, Valar Mugulis, they also had a 40 v 40. Uh, so just a big shout out to them and here they're coming back doing it again here in week four with another uh 40 v 40 so congratulations to high seleke pulling out the victory on that one all right guys this right here was without a doubt the war of the week we have forbidden uh who took on ohg and what made this war even more special not only are both of these clans in the same division not only are both of these clans undefeated going in uh they were both sitting at three and oh going in forbidden coming out four and oh uh ohg falling to three and one uh, uh but we did have an amazing war a very very close war uh forbidden getting a one star victory guys winning 86 to 85 and we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. Forbidden putting up a solid three 10 v 10 triples this war, which is what ultimately won them the war. Uh, 10 v 11 game going four for eight, hitting way above the league average. That's 50% uh, they were hitting uh, on their hit ups uh, with their Town Hall 10s, two starring OHG's Town Hall 11s. On the dips, they went seven for seven as they did have an 11 v 11 attempt. Uh, that did end up in a fail, but regardless on their actual Lem V10 dips going 100%. Uh, big shout out to Forbidden putting up solid numbers week after week. Uh, OHG still had an amazing war, you guys. Uh, they put up a solid two 10 V10 triples this war. Uh, they went three for 11, so they, uh, Forbidden definitely had the edge in the hit up game. Uh, so OHG going three for 11. 
OHG also going seven for seven on uh, their 11 v 10 dips. Again, they also tried for that 11 v 11 attempt, which they were unsuccessful. But what an amazing war of the week this was. Uh, it definitely wasn't a blowout. Both clans were in the war from the beginning. Uh, again, forbidding getting a one-star victory, 86 to 85 over over OHG. So Forbidden is now holding uh, that first place spot in their division. So huge, huge shout out to them. Huge shout out to OHG as well, really hanging in there. And it was just a very, very close war. Uh, the wars that you know we all strive to have uh, for when both clans perform. N neither one really outperforming the other at the end of the day. Uh, but Forbidden getting a solid victory. And they're still undefeated. The only undefeated clan in the league. Okay, next up, we have Bad Intentions who took on COC Hogwarts. Uh... Uh, bad intentions coming out on top. Uh, the final was 86 uh, to 83. So they did have a solid three-star victory over COC Hogwarts. Uh, and and we, we were kind of unsure how COC Hogwarts was going to perform, especially after just beating FYSB back in week three. Uh, so it, it was a war that quite a few people were paying close attention to. But again, bad intentions coming out on top. Uh, BI did have two 10v10 triples this war. Very solid. And they cleared all of COC Hogwarts is <laughs> Town Hall 11s uh, with bad intentions. Town Hall 10s going four for nine. So still hitting well above the league average. And what really decided uh, this war or uh, another stat that decided this war, uh, they pretty much were ahead across the board uh, was they went eight for eight on their dips, guys. I'm telling you. You, you go 100% on your dips, all it does is add that much more pressure on the other clan. You can't, the other clan pretty much cannot have any more slip ups or have any slip ups for that matter when you're hitting at 100% on these dips, guys. So, congrats to Bad Intentions for pulling that one off. Uh, COC Hogwarts also managed to get a 10v10 triple this war. Uh, they did go one for seven in their 10v10 game. So, still solid. You put up a 10v10. Uh, that's pretty, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty good considering the majority of these breakdowns only have 10 Town Hall 10s in them. Uh, 10 to 11 is going 3 for 13. Uh, so that, not that they did bad, but you have to clear those Town Hall 11s with your Town Hall 10s. Just falling short. Uh, pretty much average. That's average where the league is right now. Uh, clearing. There's always that one Town Hall 11 that is going to give you uh, a huge headache. So they still did a decent job. Uh, clearing three out of the four and on their dips they had one dip fail so it's not that coc hogwarts technically had a bad war except bad intentions had an amazing war and when you're going against a clan who's going perfect on dips who's clearing your 11s who's putting up two 10 v 10s you have to show up and that's exactly what bad intentions did so best of luck to both of these clans going into week five good job to both of them at the end of the day okay next up we have Dark Avengers, who took on Nottingham, and Nottingham started off very solid in the season, have lost, they have lost their last two wars, uh, again, losing to Dark Avengers, the final to this war, 84 to 82, big props, big ups to DA pulling out yet another victory, they are now 3-1 and one on the season, Nottingham is now at an even 500, sitting at 2-2 two and two right now, uh, and... DA, okay, breaking down the stats, uh, we do have some good ones on uh, right here. This was the 110v10 that Dark Avengers had, uh, the replay you guys are watching. Uh, so this was their uh, one and only Town Hall 10 triple of this war. On their 10v11 game, they went four for seven. So again, hitting way above the league average, very solid as they, as they have been in their hit-ups uh, throughout the season uh, for the most part. And they only had one dip fail going seven for eight. Uh, so still, they with the 10v10 and especially what is now becoming the elusive 10v11, it seems like going four for seven, only having three of those being fails and one of them being fresh, uh, just did an amazing job going four for seven, uh, which ultimately gave them the edge getting this victory. Uh, Nottingham, however, had two 10v10 triples this war as... Uh, they've tri they've had a 10v10 triple every single war uh, so far this season. So we know they can perform there. Where they need to clean it up 
is the 10 v 11 game going three for 14. Uh, so only clearing three and had a lot of attacks, uh, a lot of attempts in trying to do so, uh, leaving one of them uh, one starred. And that ate up one of their Town Hall 11 hits. On their dips, they went five for seven. So they had two dip fails. And that eighth hit is what went for an 11 v 11 attempt, ultimately ended up in a fail. Uh, so best of luck to both these clans also going into week five and huge props to DA for going three and one on the season now and getting a, a huge two star victory over a good clan, uh, that being Nottingham. Okay. This is the war right here, guys. Uh, go to Borks Kriega again. They beat for those of you that missed it or haven't heard they beat above and beyond. We don't know exactly where go to Borks Kriega is. What we do know is where is where Swarm Synergy is, guys. Uh, 87 to 78 was the final. Think about that. A nine-star victory uh, for Swarm Synergy. This is exactly how they did it. Six 10v10 triples, guys. Uh, pretty much dropped the mic at that point. You have you put up six 10v10s. Uh, that is absolutely huge. And they, uh, this also was a little heavier breakdown. It was still a 30v30, uh, but there were 12 Town Hall 10s on the map. So the breakdown was uh, 412 filled uh, the rest with Town Hall 9s. But I mean, come on, getting six 10v10 triples, uh, you can pretty much just walk out at that point. Uh, 10v11s also completely smashed it. Swarm Synergy has some of the best Town Hall 10s in the league right now, going four for nine, hitting way above the league average, and going six for six on their dips. And what are you guys looking at on your screen right now? An 11v11 triple coming from Swarm Synergy, probably one of the best wars uh, I would say that they've probably ever had. I mean, poor Gortoborg's Kriega, again, them being above and beyond, not knowing exactly where they're at, were they going to beat Swarm Synergy? We just did not know. It did not happen this war. Uh, they didn't get a 10v10. Uh, they fell flat on the 10v11s going three for 12, and they had two dip fails, so they... Just across the board, Swarm Synergy, without a doubt, completely dominated this war. They've moved to three and one. Go towards Krieg out reversed, uh, basically a mirror image going one, or they're one in three now on the season. Uh, but huge props to Swarm Synergy, uh, putting up numbers like that. Very, very impressed. Okay, next up, guys, for uh, these wars that we are highlighting, the best wars that came from Premier here in week four. Gunma Samurai, who took on Reddit Viper, yet again an interesting war, nevertheless. Uh, Gunma Samurai getting a 10v10 triple as they have every single war uh, so far this season coming into week four. Uh, they did have a 10v10. Again, hitting above the league average uh, on their hit ups, the 10v11 game, going four for nine. And on their dip game, still putting up solid numbers. Seven for eight is still very, very solid. Only having one dip fail. Uh, very, very solid uh, on their 11 v 10 dips. Reddit Viper. I don't think I got... Uh, wait, backing up. I don't think I told you guys the final. Gunma Samurai won 84 to 76. An eight-star victory uh, for Gunma Samurai. Okay, so Reddit Viper... Uh, very, very tough across the board. Uh, definitely a war I'm pretty sure that they're going to want to um, close the door on and forget about and quickly move on. But I will go ahead and give you guys uh, the stats here in this league recap. They didn't have a 10v10. And what was more interesting is they didn't even have they didn't even have a 10v10 attempt. Why? Because of the Talon Nines. We've said it before. Nines often can't... Uh, win you wars, but they can definitely lose you wars, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, they went 10 for 27 on their 9v9 game, and uh, six of Gun Moss Samurai's Town Hall 9s had to be dipped uh, with Reddit Viper's Town Hall 10s. Very, very tough. Only cleared one Town Hall 11 with their Town Hall 10s, going one for 14. Not sure what happened there, but again, I'm sure they want to just quickly move on and look forward have a rest this by this bye week and quickly move on going into week five. And they went four for five on their dip game. So having one dip fill, all those other 11 hits had to go up because their 10 via or their hit ups with their town hall tens 
were not able to get it done. So their nines couldn't get it done. Their tens couldn't get it done. No 10 v 10 attempts. Very, very tough war uh, for Reddit Viper. Uh, but however, best of luck to both these clans going into week five. And congrats to Gunma Samurai for pulling out the victory. Okay, next up we have King Jeffrey who took on From Molten Lava. King Jeffrey having a nice uh, long break uh, considering what happened with their original matchup uh, against CWC Brawlers. Uh, they came out hungry, guys. They put up some very, very impressive numbers, getting a solid two-star victory over uh, From Molten Lava. KJ winning 84 to 82. And again, KJ was hungry. We weren't sure if that that weekend break, uh, because they didn't get that war set with CWC Brawlers uh, that they ended up postponing. We didn't. We weren't sure who, who, if they were gonna fall flat because of it or if they were gonna be hungry. They end up getting hungry and putting up very very good numbers, uh, having three 10 v 10 triples this war. They went three for nine uh, on their hit ups. Uh, so not the best that we've seen, especially since week one, uh, but still decent. And they did have two dip fails. So From Molava definitely had opportunities uh, to win this war. So KJ didn't have the best stats, but those three 10v10s really put them over the edge, considering From Molten Lava did not get a, a town hall. Uh, From Molten Lava did not have a 10v10 three star this war. They went two for 14 on their hit ups, uh, which was really, really tough, uh, leaving two of King Jeffrey's. Uh, Town Hall 11's up on the board. and However, From Molava did go 8 for 8 on their dip, something to build off of going into week 5. And what really, really hurt uh, From Molava was their Town Hall 9's. Uh, they were only able to clear 12 out of the 16 Town Hall 9's on the map. Uh, so they had 4 dips uh, to go down and clear those, which didn't leave them a lot of 10v10 opportunities. But congratulations to King Jeffrey for getting that solid, solid victory. All right, next up we have TWSS who took on CWC Brawlers. TWSS walking away with the victory. They've now moved to 3-1 and one on the season. CWC Brawlers have now fallen to 1-2. and two. Again, they still have to get that war done with KJ as we just uh, talked about. Uh, but TWSS getting a one-star victory, winning 82-81, to 81, which we've noticed a lot of TWSS victories have come this way. They're not putting up huge numbers. I know they had three 10v10s back in week one, have not had much happening since then as far as their 10v10 action and the trend also did continue uh this war uh they didn't have a 10v10 they had nine attempts but were not able to get a 10v10 triple uh on their hit ups they went three for 12 so burned a lot of town hall 10 attacks uh trying to get these 11s doubled left one up on the board and however what's winning for twss you guys is their dip game i believe this is the third war in a row where they've gone 100% on their dips going 7 for 7. That other Town Hall 11 attack went to uh, at least double the 11 uh, that their Town Hall 10s were not able to do on the hit-up. CWC Brawlers, however, I mean, they had plenty of opportunities to, to take down TWSS this war. Uh, in all fairness, they did have a 10v10 triple, uh, so they beat them in, in, uh, in that stat. And they also cleared all of their Town Hall 11s. They went four for nine. What killed CWC Brawlers guys was their dips. Going five for eight, having three dip fills. So they definitely had a chance. We're not able to capitalize on the opportunity clearing TWSS, uh, TWSS Town Hall 11s where TWSS couldn't. Also having a uh, 10v10 triple where they didn't, but it's the dip game. The dip game is absolutely huge, so it's something they have to improve on going into week five. And I guarantee you, they improve the dip game and keep putting up these other uh, solid numbers, they will start winning a lot more wars in the season. Big props to TWSS for continuing to put up these victories uh, you know, week after week. So big props uh, to TWSS. Next up, we have Grumpy Old Men, who definitely put on a show against Vilar Mugulis. Uh, the final to this war, 86-81. to 81, A huge five-star victory over VM. Grumpy Old Men is now sitting very comfortably at 3-1. and one. Vilar Mugulis still searching for their first victory of the season. They are, again, they are 0-4 uh, on the season right now. 
grumpy old man hitting it 50% 10v10. Uh, they did have four uh, 10v10 triples this war. Their 10v11 game, they went three for eight. Uh, so not the best, definitely not the worst. But what they did is they went six for, because they had so many 10v10 triples, uh, they went six for six, six for six on their dips going 100%. They had a, uh, they tried a couple of MV11 attempts. They were able to secure, uh, that Town Hall 11 on the hit ups that they weren't able to get done. Their Town Hall 11s came in and secured the high percentage two star, uh, in order to at least get all of VM's Town Hall 11s doubled. So big props to them. Four 10v10s, guys. That is absolutely huge in this breakdown. Var Mugulis, they did, they had one 10v10, so big improvement. Their 10v11 game really, really wrecked them in this war, uh, going one for 11. So definitely, I'm hoping they took this bye weekend to start practicing in FCs and practicing in other uh, random matchups or arranged wars that they have going on to improve their 10v11 game. Uh, still put up solid stats elsewhere. Again, getting a 10v10 and also going six for six on their dips, 100%. Uh, but to definitely, I mean, to help out that star total, you got to get these Town Hall 11s doubled with the Town Hall 10s practice wherever you can. Best of luck to both of these clans going into week five. Okay, guys, last war that we're going to uh, be recapping here before we get into what's going to be going down in week five. Uh, Assassin's Corps getting their first victory of the season. They have now moved up to one in three, where BDM Beatables is still searching for their first victory on the season. They have fallen to now 0 in four uh, so far. Uh, Assassin's Corps putting up pretty decent numbers. I mean, a huge improvement uh, considering their stats uh, from the other weeks. Uh, they had a 10v10 triple. Very, very solid. That's what you guys are watching on the screen right now. Uh, they went 3 for 12 on their 10v11s on their hit-ups. So burned quite a few of their Town Hall 10 hits. Uh, definitely ate up a lot of Town Hall 10 hits trying to get these 11s doubled. Uh, we know that they have solid 10v10 attackers, but you... you they ate a lot of hits I mean, at the end of the day. They ate a lot of hits uh, and still left one up on the board. So definitely something they can work. Uh, they can definitely tweak some things, uh, things to build off of moving into week five. However, what they don't need to tweak is their 11 V10 dips going seven for seven. Absolutely love it. A lot of clans uh, in a lot of different wars uh, here in week four 11 or these 11 v10 dips are absolutely i mean these are very impressive going a hundred percent big props big props to assassin's core uh definitely deserve this victory winning 84 to 83 that was the final bd and beatables also put up a 10 v10 uh triple this war just like assassin's core bd and beatables were actually uh a lot more impressive in their 10 v11 game going four for eight they had a chance to win this war, guys, to beat Assassin's Core, to flip these records around. However, they had two dip fails. And like I've been saying all along uh, from the beginning of the season and throughout this recap, the when you go 100% on the dips, it adds that much more pressure. And that's exactly what happened uh, to beat and beatable Assassin's Core, put a lot of pressure on them. And they were, were not able to execute their dips going six for eight. Uh, so having those two dip fills costed them the war. Uh, big prop. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed uh, all the attacks featured uh, here in week four. This is a sneak peek into the future for what uh, matchups are going to be going down in week five. Uh, again, I don't want the video to get too long. Uh, but go ahead and screenshot it if you'd like. And also, before the video ends, down in the description, I do have a link. Uh, this weekend, since it's a bye weekend, there's no CWO Wars. However, we do have the uh, All-Stars. Uh, the leaders from each clan have picked a select number 
of players to war. So we have Premier versus Premier. The best of the best going head to head. Uh, make sure you guys check it out. Uh, in the link, you'll see all of the streams. It's going to be a 24 hour stream all going down this weekend when you guys are watching this video. So make sure you tune in and support these streamers that are dedicating all of their time uh, to bring footage right to you guys. So make sure you check that out. Show CWO Premiere some love and tune into these streams. Again, the, the link is down in the description below. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video as you guys May, you may or may not know it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, to get this content out to you guys. So again, I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. And I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Leave any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next video.